It's the Frontline Theater. Frontline Theater presents a half hour of hilarious comedy entitled Three Men on a Horse, starring Charlie Ruggles, Isabel Jewell, Sam Levine, and James Dunn. And as an added attraction, there's the music of your very own G.I. Trio. A hearty welcome to Frontline Theater, men. This is your theater, and every performance is presented especially for you, the men and women of the United Nations. Our play tonight, Three Men on a Horse, is a riotous comedy involving horse racing, a composer of greeting card verses, and, of course, a girl. But before we raise the curtain, here's the G.I. Trio with a novel arrangement of an old tune. See you again later. And now as the curtain rises, we find that Dobbins Lane in suburban Ozone Heights consists of a model house on the corner and a series of exact dittos stretching to the end of the block. The uh, second ditto from the end is the comparatively happy home of Irwin Trowbridge, a writer of greeting cards and poetry, and his wife Audrey. This morning, however, there seems to be a rift in the lute. Irwin is still upstairs, but Audrey is crying gently in the living room as her brother walks in the front door. Hiya, sis. What's wrong? Oh, Clarence, I'm so glad you came over. It's Elwood. What's that big bully done to you now? Oh, Clarence, he's got women in his life. Dozens of them. These little guys surprise you. How do you know, sis? I found this little black book when I sent his pants to the cleaner this morning. Look at these names. Shirley May, Leona Wee, Bob Ola, pages of them. I ain't surprised. I suspected Irwin of leading a double life ever since I seen him trying to do an imitation of Charlie Ruggles. There was something something sinister in it. Oh, but it, it isn't just a double life. There are hundreds of names. Maybe they're all his wives. Now, wait a minute, sis. I hear him coming downstairs now. Just let your big brother handle this, Audrey. wouldn't you? Good morning. Oh, wait a minute. I got one. The birds and the butterflies send you greetings. It's spring, and today, in memory, we're meeting. Mother's Day, number 11. Uh, good morning, darling. Well, hello, Erwin. Yeah, how long have you been answering to darling? Look here, you two-timing chiseler. Your philandering isn't going to ruin my sister's life. Oh, that's silly. I'm not a philanderer. I couldn't be. Audrey wouldn't stand for it, would you, dear? Then who are the women in this book? Yes, Erwin. And what are they to you? Oh, they're only a hobby. Only a hobby? <laughs> I know it. 
He's a regular Casaloma. A re- Casaloma? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Those names in my book are names of horses. I just dope them out every day on the bus. I do it just like other people do crossword puzzles. Of course, I'd never bet on a horse. We couldn't afford it, could we, dear? Okay. Now, come clean. Where's the money? How many bank accounts have you got? Come on. Look me in the eye. Look me... Oh, Clarence. Aha! Look me in the eye. Now, Audrey, tell him to leave me alone, will you, please? He always spoils my whole day. I've got to write 67 Mother's Day greetings, and I'm getting out of the mood. My goodness, I haven't done anything wrong. I believe you, Irwin. Well, I don't believe him. I think he's lying. I suppose you know who's going to win today. Well, I certainly do. Brass Monkey. How do you know? Well, I just do, that's all. He's lying. He can't possibly pick the winners every day. Of course I can. I don't see anything so hard about being a little smarter than a horse. <laughs> There's something wrong here, sis. Oh, why don't you turn your big fat head in for points? Oh. <laughs> Irwin! So this is the thanks I get. Irwin, apologize to Clarence right away. Well, apologize? <laughs> oh, all right, if I have to. I apologize. I'm sorry. But he's still a fathead. Goodbye. <laughs> apologize to that big stuff nincompoop. Now he's got me so nervous, I'll never be able to write those verses. He gets me so mad, I can't relax. Every time I think of house, I think of louse. I'll do something desperate, I will. I'll take a drink or something. If Edgar Allan Poe could drink a quart for the raven, I ought to be able to take a couple of swallows for the mothers of the world. Oh, uh, uh, pardon me. (coughs) Oh, uh, bar bar person. I, uh, I believe I'll have a small scotch, please. Yes, I know it's early in the morning, but I'm taking it for, uh, (coughs) medical reasons. Thank you. (laughs) Well, here's how. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, uh, would you mind serving me a scotch? The regular size, please. Oh, bartender, bartender, I'll have a straight scotch and make it king size. Woo, I'm beginning to feel really relaxed. <laughs> Oh, oh, excuse me. Oh. Uh, excuse me, boys. Hotel Lavalier Cocktail Lounge. Harry the bartender speaking. Oh, hello, Duffy. Uh, just a second, Duffy. Uh, Duffy wants to know if you guys want to make a bet in the third grade. Ah, uh, we ain't made up our minds yet. Tell him we're going into our transom now to figure. Okay, call us back, hey, Duffy. He knows, he knows, he knows, he little hey, hey, who's that? Uh, hey, some little hey, guy hey. in a dark suit. He looks like he's slightly air conditioned. Hey, hey, look out for them steps. Whoop! All right, oh, they ought to nail those steps down. Uh, good afternoon, mister. You all right? Yeah, well, good afternoon? Yeah. Oh, what happened to good morning? Um, what do you have? Well, sure, double, double, double scotch, please. You know, Frankie, I think we better get down on the, on the fair weather for the third race. Nah, Patsy, I still like roast for Excuse me, gentlemen, I see you're interested in horses. You should play semester in the third race. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What makes you think semester is going to win? Oh, I always know the winner. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Well, ain't this a coincidence? So do I. Oh, my, you always pick the winner? Sure, I never miss. <laughs> oh, she is easy, isn't it, huh? <laughs> oh, oh, Look okay. here, oh. genius. Uh, yes, yeah, she's speaking now to me. get out of my hair, will you? I'll play my own selections, and I want no help from nobody. All right, but you should play semester in the third, hasty bell in the fourth, and... <coughs> oh, oh, pardon me. Bartender, could you tell uh, me where... that away. Yeah, thank you, thank you. What do you figure that guy for? I don't know. He just wandered in here. Oh, hey, here's Mabel, Patsy. Hello, Patsy, darling. Hello, hello. Hello, hello boy. Hello, hello. Mabel. Hello. How do you do, Dreamboat? How much do you get? Well, not much when you consider I hawked every dress I own except the one I've got on. I kept that not because it was so good, but I thought I'd feel a little conspicuous coming home without it. Mm-hmm. Let me see what you mean. Oh, I hope it's a good horse this time, Patsy. I'm down to my last step in. Don't worry, darling. I've taken off more clothes for the horses than I ever did for the Schubert. And I always got my clothes back from the Schubert. Hotel Lavalier, cocktail lounge. Harry the bartender speaking. Oh, hello, Duffy. I'll be finished. Yeah? Yeah? 
Yeah? Yeah, okay. Well, soak me with a herring semester at 14 to 1. Semester? That's the horse that little gremlin was trying to give us. What little gremlin is that? Anyone I know? Yeah, just a guy, Mabel. Hey, look, Patsy. He left his little black book on a bar. He got the horses out of that. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Yeah, here. Geez, he's got them all figured out. Pages of them. Yeah, well, what's he got for the fourth race? Tasty Bell. Maybe we ought to put two bucks on it. Two bucks, nothing. We'll play the wake. Shoot the moon. Oh, wait a minute. How do we know this ain't a racket, Patsy? If it is, I never heard of it. Then it ain't a racket. Ah, never mind that. Get the piano phone, Frankie. Honey, how much you get for the dresses? Eight bucks, Patsy. Now I ain't got anything left to hawk except that lovely picture of Mama when she was a strip tease girl in burlesque. Honey, give me the eight bucks. Sure, honey. Oh, gee, it's criminal the way I trust you. I must be a bigger dope than I think I am. How are you going to play it? We're shooting the wad on a four-horse parley. Gee, Patsy, y'all on the say so of that little goof. Frankie, I got an idea he's going to be the goof that lays us a golden egg. <laughs> How do you feel now, Owen? Uh, what color am I? Oh, a sort of a nice shade of gray. Yeah, that's funny. I feel sort of green. Hmm. You think you could go back in now? Yeah, I suppose so. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. Well, here he is again. Mabel, this is Owen. Gee, he's a pretty color. Yeah, why doesn't she stand still? She keeps jumping around all the time. What you need is a drink. You, oh, no. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no. No, oh, Mr. Carver is going to be awfully mad at me if I don't get to the office today. You don't know how cranky that guy is. Hotel Lavalier Cocktail Lounge, Harry the bartender speaking. Oh, hello, Duffy. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Tasty Bell just came in. Yahoo! You hear that, Mabel? We're going to be rich again. Before I'm rich, I want my clothes back. Hey, hey, Irwin, Hasty Bell won. Yeah, but I told you she'd win. Yeah, but she did win. Isn't that great? Yeah, oh, it's great. Hooray! Hotel left. Oh, leave us dispense with the formalities, Duffy. Who won? Hank! Rip Van Winkle just robbed him. This is sensational. Oh, when you got a great brain. Yo, thank you, thank you. But it's really the horse that deserves all the credit, you know. All I did was pick him. He had to go to all the trouble of running. Well, come on, Iwin. Bottoms up. I told you, Frankie, I had a hunch about Iwin. Listen, there's still one race between me and my clothes. Oh, look, look. I better be going to the office now. Hey, Irwin, you better not go to the office. You're a little stiff. Yeah, oh, no. I'm limber enough. I'm limber enough. In fact, I'm a little too limber. Iwin, why don't you just call this carver guy up and tell him what's what? Yeah, I'll do it as soon as I know what's what. <laughs> He did it! All four races come in. All I four horses come in. this to my dying day. What an afternoon. I never seen nothing like it before. Will you guys kindly be so kind as to close your trap? I'm trying to get Irwin's boss on the phone. You ready, Irwin? Oh, now, wait. Maybe I better not do this. Maybe I shouldn't quit. Well, you've got to do it for your own self-respect. For my own self uh, You're right. You're right. Put the red-faced old turkey on. Here he is with his neck on the block. Give him the act, Irwin. Yeah. Tell him you're quitting. I will. I will. Miss... Hello, Mr. Carver. This is Irwin Trowbridge. Well, never mind where I am. Mr. Carver, you've been shouting at me for years. You've been working me like a dog, and you've been grossly underpaying me. And now, Mr. Carver, you're fired. <laughs> was Act One of Three Men on a Horse with Charlie Ruggles, Isabel Jewell, Sam Levine, and James Dunn. And now for a bit of rhythmic intermission music by the... <laughs> Thank you, fellas. But now let's get right into Act Two of Three Men on a Horse. It's shortly after noon of the next day in Patsy's room at the Hotel Lavalier. Irwin is just waking up. Oh, my head. Oh, Good oh. morning, Irwin. How are you oh, feeling? Oh, beyond description. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. What happened? What happened? You tried to embalm yourself. Do you remember me? Oh, do I? Oh, yes, yes. You're Mabel. But you're so much more distinct than I remember you, Mabel. I had the impression you were sort of fuzzy around the edges. And you had four eyes, four ears, and thousands of teeth. 
Well, I hope what you see now is an improvement. Oh, it is, it is. Does anybody know where we are? This is my room in the Lavalier Hotel. Oh, is that so? I hope the establishment has some respectability. Well, at a buck and a quarter a day, they can't afford to throw in any extras. But I'll tell you something. When he's in New York, this is where Charlie Ruggles stays. Oh, really? Is it? <laughs> oh, that Ruggles must be a caution. <laughs> I've always been one of his greatest admirers, you know. I believe you. Well, I've got to get out of bed right now and take my poems to... <laughs> look out! Look out! What's the matter? Yeah, the room's spinning around. Run for your lives. It's an earthquake. Hmm. No, I guess it isn't. Now, just relax, Irwin. But keep hold of your head so it doesn't fall off. Uh, you know, you might as well face it. You can't go to your office. Not after yesterday afternoon. Why, what happened? What happened? Don't you remember? You called up this J.G. Carver. Oh, yes, he's my boss. Yeah, I wanted to tell him where I was. Yeah, but you told him where to go. Oh, did I? Well, don't worry about it, Irwin. Here's 112 bucks for you. It's 10% of what we want on your tips. From now on, your job is picking horses for us. Oh, now, gosh, I don't know. Ah, I... Never mind, never mind. Go in and take a shower. We want you to be in good shape. Gee, Irwin, you're the first guy I ever met that could really prove that man's best friend is the horse. How are you calling with the selections, Irwin? No, not so good. I can't seem to work in this room. I'm I'm used to picking them while I'm riding on the bus. So well, maybe we ought to give him sort of a bus atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. Rock this chair a little, Frankie. Okay, Pat. Oh, please. Please, my head. Oh, my head. Please. I hope this does it, Irwin. Step up to the rear of the bus, please. Have your fans ready. Excuse me, sir. I'm getting out here at 110th Street. Do you mind if I step beside you, buddy? Have your fares ready. Step up to the rear of the bus. No, 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 no. That's no good. I can't figure anything out at all. I, I guess he misses the exhaust fumes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did you write down there? Oh, it's just a horse in the fifth race today. What is it? Let's see. Madman Munts. Is he the winner? <laughs> no, 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 no. I just wrote it down to see how it looked, but it didn't look right to me. No, it's no use. I've got to do this on the bus. Okay, Owen. Frankie and Mabel will ride along with you to your house. When you get there, you can phone your selections to me. And then we murder the bookies. <laughs> Sweetheart, Audrey, oh darling, <clears throat> no one home I guess. What kind of news is that, good or bad? Oh gee, this is a cute place you got, Irwin. Yeah, well, we like it. Oh, I like houses, but they don't have no room service. Hey, let's phone in those selections to Patsy. Okay, I'll call him. Pennsylvania six five nine zero zero. Gee, this is swell, Irwin. You know, there's something about a home that. Well, sort of homey. Yeah, you're so right. You're so right. I can't imagine where my wife is. Well, don't try to. I did once. And sure enough, she was. Hello, Kitty? Mabel. Patsy. Patsy? Mabel. Irwin. Patsy Irwin. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is Mabel Irwin. Oh, this is Irwin, Mabel. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Patsy. I got them right here. For the first race, handshake... Second, sandwich man. Third race, side slip. Fourth race, trouble me not. No, I didn't have time to get the others figured out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, on the way back. Get a load of this, Mabel. What, Frankie? Look, I tried to figure them out on a bus myself, but not one of the horses I doped out as a ride on. Okay, Patsy, yeah. Yeah, goodbye. Well, let's go back and get the rest of the horses. Come on. Come on, I went. Come all on, right, all on. right, but stop pushing. Gee, the way I'm getting shoved around, you'd think I was on casters. <laughs> Gee, wasn't it nice of those Boy Scouts to drag the mill pond for Irwin? Yeah. Hey, sis, it looks like somebody's been in here. What's this piece of paper doing on the floor? Oh, Clarence, I bet Irwin's been here. Is, is that a note or something? Just a second, I'll see. Hey, he's been here all right. It's a list of the winning horses for the day, and it's on stationery from the Lavalier Hotel. Well, it doesn't look like Irwin's handwriting. He's disguising it. I'll show him. What are you going to do? I'm going to bet my shirt. Yeah, yeah, Duffy. Ah, oh, never mind how we know. Goodbye. 
Well, trouble me not came in too. How packed Yeah, you? boy, ain't that sure. great. This train is getting me down four races in a row. You know, it don't seem possible we could win the fifth race, too. It does seem unlikely, doesn't it? What? what? Yeah, I didn't, didn't mean that. I, I just meant that it does seem unlikely. Oi, win. Now, wait just a minute. Now, look, Irwin, we've got everything we own riding on that next race. Now, Senior Kayam will win, won't he? Oh, sure. Or should we switch to Madman Munch like you wrote on that piece of paper before we took the bus trip? No, no, I was just trying that out. But I, I didn't like Madman Muncy at all. I didn't like him. Right? Okay, it's Senior Kayam then, huh? How much are you betting, Owen? Who, me? Oh, oh, no, I'd rather not bet, please. I... We'd rather you did bet. We feel a little more confident. Oh, you do? Would. Well, if you want me to... After all, you've given me 10% of your winnings, and I've got a lot of money here. I... Okay, I'll bet $2 on the nostro. Oi, when Frankie and Harry and I don't want to be tough, but we've decided you better shoot your whole roll on us. Well, all of my 10%? That's it, I won. Hand it over, and I'll bet it with ours. Uh, well, okay. There you are. I found you, you low-down cheat, you crook. Yeah, this is my brother-in-law, fellas. He ruined me. He left a list of horses on the floor, and I drew out every cent I had in the bank, and now I'm clean. I'm washed up. <laughs> oh, Clarence. <laughs> if that weren't so sad, it'd be funny. What a shame. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm sorry to hear it, Clarence. <laughs> oh, you dirty double-crossing Mother's Day crook, you. Harry, throw the gentleman out. Oh, no, no. I'll go. I'll go. Gee, there's something funny in the air around here. Something's going wrong. I can almost feel my clothes leaving my closet for the hawk shop counter. Oywin, just in case Senior Kayam doesn't come in, why don't you knock off a little voice for yourself? Something personal. Something that would look good. On a tombstone! <laughs> Oh, gee, this is the race, isn't it? Fire, fire. I am is still leading with service man coming up in knuckle duster right behind. There they come fast into the stretch. Looks like a little shoving there. No, no, it's all right. And in the stretch, coming down with a rush, Mad Mad Munch passes knuckle duster. He's going around service man, and yes, yes, he's passing Senor Cayenne. Oh, turn our radio down, Frankie. Uh, well, that's too bad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Oywin. It's just too bad. Now, wait a minute, boys. What are you going to do? 2,500 bucks riding on Senior Kayam <laughs> on your say-so. Ouch, ouch, hey. Yeah, give him one for me. I had some riding on that horse. <laughs> yeah, now, please, please, please. Don't you think this is a little drastic? Patsy, don't hit him again. I'm no. just getting warmed up. Turn the radio up loud, Frankie, so nobody will hear him squeal. Now, wait a minute. There apparently was some shoving just as the horses turned into the stretch. Hey, hey, wait, listen. And so Madman Munts is disqualified, folks, and the judges have announced the official winner is Senor Kayam, paying 12 to 1. Oh, oh, it's a miracle. We won. I've been endowed like a colleague. Holy yeah. Oh, I win. I win. I love you. Yeah, you, uh... You you hit me, didn't you? Uh, now, I went, I went, I didn't know, I didn't know. I went, I went, don't, don't. Ah, ah, ah. Touche. <laughs> I love the mug, but he had it coming to him. Holy smoke, he's got a punch. You're doing beautifully, Irwin. Irwin, am I forgiven? Well, I'll think it over. Well, Mrs. Trowbridge? Erwin, here's Mr. Carver, and he wants oh, to... Erwin, oh, Erwin, Erwin, I need you. You've yes. got to go back to work for me. I'll give you a new office, a dandy new desk. I'll put your name on the door, and I'll raise you from 40 to $50 a week. Yeah, 50 Uh, 60 a week. 60 All right, 75 75 Yes, 75 uh, Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Carver. Thank well, you. That's more like it, Carver. Now, how about the sixth race? Wait, oh, wait. no, Patsy, it's no use. I'll never be able to pick the horses anymore. Why not? Well, because you made me bet. What's the difference? You can't dope them out for money. You've got to do it for fun. I wouldn't have any idea who was going to win now. Well, it was nice work while we had it. Yes. Mr. Carver, here's the verses for the Mother's Day greetings for you. Oh, thank you, my boy. Uh, you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's got a pencil? I have one, Irwin. Uh, give it to Mr. Carver, will you, Audrey? Maybe, maybe this is the sixth race. Have you got it, Irwin? Yes, yes. Uh, take this down, Mr. Carver. Um, <clears throat> the race is o'er. We've won, my lad. Love and kisses to dear old dad, Father's Day number one. <laughs>
And so down rings the final curtain on Three Men on a Horse, starring Charlie Ruggles, Isabel Jewell, Sam Levine, and James Dunn. Next week, Frontline Theater will present another play, and each week thereafter, you'll hear your favorite acting stars in comedies, mysteries, musicals, and romances. If you have a favorite play you want enacted, just drop a line to Frontline Theater, Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. Frontline Theater was produced by the Armed Forces Radio Service. (laughs) 